Dr. Hughes, Dr. Walker, uh, thank you for joining us today um, to discuss uh, acute limb ischemia and kind of get a um, practice management strategy and have some open discussion on the um, options for treatment and diagnosis coming from a, a rural surgeon perspective. Uh, thank you both for coming. So to begin with, um, I think you guys have a, a unique insight into this. So what would be some maybe tips and tricks for the rural surgeon when someone with either a cold leg or a pulseless leg arrives to the ER and, and they're getting call, uh, called uh, to uh, assess the situation. Uh, and again, this would be in a, in a rural setting environment. Well, I think the first thing uh, when presented with an acute uh, vascular problem in the rural or community setting is you have to have planned for it before it ever arrives. Uh, the ER needs to know that, yes, you do take on these kind of cases. Yes, this is the scope of things that you do. And that when the call comes in then at the inconvenient time, as it always is an in inconvenient time, you already have some protocols set up uh, as to how you're going to handle it, which cases are going to stay where you are and which need a higher level of care. So I think that's a great start is that your, your, your uh, place of practice needs to be prepared for this and be knowledgeable of your skills. But basic vascular disease, uh, the type you take care of in a rural community, starts with a history and physical. And I would say that with a good history, determining the patient's risk factors for vascular disease, medications they're on, previous vascular history, in combination with a solid uh, f physical examination, particularly a vascular examination of the periphery, sets the stage for a, a good outcome. I would say that in your emergency room and at hand should be a, a Doppler. When we're dealing with vascular disease, a, a Doppler evaluation doesn't have to be a fancy one done in a vascular lab. It can be a simple Doppler evaluation of the extremities. It can get you a long way toward determining a diagnosis and, and set the stage for, for a good outcome. Frequently, the vascular problem isn't even recognized as a vascular problem. So I think the general surgeon needs to be aware when they get the call, well, I have this person with a, with a painful leg, or I don't think it's anything, but maybe on a chat. That's when that uh, eyes on the patient, because most of us have done vascular for very long. You walk in the door and you look at that extremity and you go, okay, this is the real thing. To achieve an optimal outcome, is there any like, again, like key points or anything uh, in an optimal outcome means at least salvageable or uh, appropriate enough to, to be moved to the next facility uh, in a rural setting? Uh, any suggestions on how to like get that optimal outcome from, from a rural doctor? You know, uh, vascular surgery, it, it, it's, it's a kind of frustrating field in a way, but you, mm -hmm. the operation's not over until you get a pulse. And so if I'm going to tell you how to get, you get an acceptable outcome, it's the, is there a pulse, at least by Doppler at the completion of the procedure. A preoperative pre, pre disease may prevent a palpable pulse. So you've got to stay after that patient uh, to salvage that limb until you've got a pulse established. And that takes more patience and time than sometimes you have. Most, particularly rural surgeons, are really stressed for time. And like Tyler said, it's always the middle of the night but you got to complete the procedure. And then you may be able to keep them there on anticoagulation or transfer them to some place that needs more extensive uh, uh, work, can do more extensive workup. Yeah, I would tack on to that, that um, let's say you have an acutely ischemic uh, problem that you have cleared and you've gotten a pulse. You need to remember uh, the criticality of time and be very willing and able to do a fasciotomy on these legs doesn't do you any good to get uh, flow back and you have a bunch of dead muscle because you didn't decompress their compartments. So I think, you know, like so much in rural surgery and community surgery, you need to be thinking like chess, you know, seven or 12 steps ahead. You know, for a lot of us, there's no blood or very little blood available to us. So you've got to, you've got to figure out what is going to be my blood supply chain. Because uh, Pat and I often joke, uh, no, we don't do vascular unless there's a bullet in it or the vessel's already broken. Um, and in, in those kinds of circumstances, you suddenly have much more than just what is the technical expertise of doing uh, a vascular repair. Uh, 